Hello, today we're going to be talking about how to be an iconic feminine leader. And we're going to have a very special guest today. We have the iconic Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika joining us today. And I see that she's already here. I'd love to just share with some of our American friends who haven't had a chance to meet you before, who we have today and why this session is really about how to be an iconic feminine leader. But before I do that, I would just like to say thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for spending some of your precious time with us. So, <laughs> so today I want to share with you Mrs. Awashika, who is a woman of many firsts. She was the first female chairperson of the Nigeria's first bank which is Nigeria's premier bank, the first Nigerian recipient of the prestigious International Women Entrepreneurial Challenge Award, and the first African recipient of the International Friendship Award by the Queen of Spain. As part of her commitment to investing in the next generation of business leaders, she has also started the 360 Executive Masterclass and the Life Series with Ibuku Awushika, which has directly impacted over 10,000 men and women and countless more across the world to date. She has founded the After School Graduate Development, so Development Center, a career center established to checkmate the high rate of unemployment in Nigeria. She's a judge on Jack Ma's Africa Business Heroes program. She was also the executive producer, I really love that movie by the way, of God Calling. And she has been featured in the highly rated Netflix original blockbuster movie, Citation. I could go on and on, but we have to stop somewhere. But you guys understand why I have the pom poms out. <laughs> to welcome Mrs. Awishika. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Pleasure is mine. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I wanted to tell you, um, tell everyone why we do this. I have a series called Iconic Women Conversations. And when I invite women to come on, the word iconic for me is an acronym. And it stands for a woman who is inspirational, who is courageous, who is original, who knows that her work is necessary, who is intentional and who is compelling. And so, of course, I knew that I had to invite you on, definitely to come on and share with us. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to start by asking you sort of an origin question. Now, obviously, as you know, and everyone is already saying this in the chat box, you've had an incredible career and it's still going on. And you're regarded as an icon by many. You know, as we're listening to you, what do you think were some of the key success factors? What are some of the things that you did that allowed you to be successful as a feminine leader? Thank you very much. Um, I think it's, you know, some parts of our stories are always, you have to give the credit to other people. I think my parents did a good job in terms of uh, setting our mind as girls. We were largely girls in my household. Mm -hmm. And my dad in particular, you know, in a, in a culture where the male child is everything, you know, had the right attitude in raising his girls. Nigeria. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I, it's my mistake. I should just have told them to leave us okay. an alternate hour from beginning to the end. So we're going to continue and I'm sure the power will come. We'll keep right. anyway. Yeah. So what, what my dad did was he raised us never to think that there's something that we couldn't do simply because we're girls. In fact, I never thought about it until people started telling me much later in life that, oh, you know, once you worried as a girl that you couldn't do this or all the talk about being in a man's world. I hadn't grown up with that mindset of being mm -hmm. in a man's world. I grew up in a, a home where my dad made us understand we could be anything that we wanted to be and we could go ahead and do that. So I didn't doubt for one minute that if there was something I was passionate enough about and I was willing to pursue, that I could go ahead and be that. And I think that's really crucial 
and why is that crucial? It's for parents to pay attention mm. to what you say to your daughters, to how you raise them, to framing their mindset, to how you tell them they can do this or they can't do something. Because ultimately, it has great impact in mm. the mindset with which they approach the world. Mm. And that, I think, made a lot of difference. And because I had, I didn't need anybody's permission to pursue being myself. I, if I thought about it and it seemed right to me, I always just went after it. And that was my attitude. And I think that, and with a lot of support, because I remember when in my mid twenties, compared to most young women trying to get a job, I wanted to start a business. In a tough country, I wanted to go into manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And that didn't seem like a good idea for a young woman of about 25 going on 26. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it didn't occur to me that, you know, there's a reason why I shouldn't want to do it because I considered doing it. And my dad never had that conversation of, oh, you can't do this, you're a girl. Mm -hmm. My parents actually just supported me and kept, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a story. So there was a point at which I took the first major loan in my business. And this was about four years into my business. Mm -hmm. It was in an environment where a young woman could never get that kind of money. And therefore, it wasn't even a bank that gave me that money. It was a young, it was a customer of mine who believed in what I was doing and saw me one day, not on top of my, I wasn't as cheerful as I would be normally. And he said to me, you don't look happy today. And I mm. said, you know what, I'm just exhausted. You know, we're pushing so hard. Oh gosh. Okay. Mm. And so we moved to generator and then public power came back. But if you give me one minute, I actually need to let them nope. put us in generator from the end. Because that's I'll, the best thing for us to do. Have one. My that's nope. usually what we do when I'm doing anything so that there's no need to change. So just give me one minute, then we won't have any disruption. No problem. So while Mrs. Awishka is doing that, I'll do a recap for you that are just joining us. She is sharing some of the key success factors uh, that have allowed her to have the kind of career that she's had so far. And one of the key things that she said, and most of you have picked up, was... Don't take it off until I'm done. Well, it's already 7 o'clock anyway. We leave it for a minute. So they did. Okay. That has nothing to do with being not, right? And so she's sharing that story. And now she's sharing a story about how she got her first bit of funding uh, from a customer. So she'll be back on in just a second. But this is a great time for you guys to share some of your big ahas from everything she said so far. What are some of the things? And don't get distracted by Nigeria. This is just growing pains. It's just reality. You know, everywhere has challenges. So let's focus on what the positives are, right? So she was just sharing about her powerful mindset, her confidence, and she's back now telling us her story about your first- Well, the video. power is gonna go off, so just wait, because they're changing the generator to put us on it permanently. So it's the right thing. It's normally what we would do if I'm doing something that we can't take a risk for part of, but I totally forgot, so I apologize. No, no worries, so please carry okay. on. Okay, so I was saying, so I had this, uh, situation and this customer who believed in what I did, uh, what I do, and had experienced my uh, business and all of that, then said to me, "You know what? I can give you." Um, it just asked me what the problem was. I like, this company I can give money to, who will give it to you? You know, but their transaction will be with me. Luckily, which is why it's important that if you do business, you must keep your integrity with everything you do, because you never know when your yesterday is the one that would uh, represent your opportunity for tomorrow. So at, at that stage, I had a finance company where I always took short-term money to do, execute a project mm -hmm. every time I needed it, because no bank in the 80s was going to give a young uh, woman that kind of money. It was end of the 80s into the 90s when mm -hmm. I started my business. So I, I said yes, and I went to this company where I'd always taken money and I'd always paid. 
you know, and I said to them, I have this opportunity, but I need a partner, a company that would uh, represent the risk on my behalf. And um, they said, yes, they'll do it because they know that I'll pay. So I linked the two, the, my customer and this finance company, and they made the transaction. The guy gave the money to them as a deposit on the condition that he'll give it to me as uh, a facility for my business and that every 90 days I would pay part of the capital and I would pay the interest. And I took it in faith because I knew what I could do, but I knew what my limitations were. And I was willing to pay the price for the growth that I needed in order to shift uh, the growth in my business. And I took it, made the investment. It gave me opportunities to be able to uh, apply and compete for bigger jobs, bought mm -hmm. all the machineries I required, moved us to a bigger factory space mm -hmm. and all of that. And um, it worked out. But the thing is, when I did that, my father found out what I'd done. He never called me and said, you can never do that. You can't take a loan. You can't do this. He didn't say one word. Mm. He just watched my back. It was when I had finished paying the money in 15 months mm. that I then found out what my father had said. The first thing he said is, I have given birth to this one. <laughs> Which means this courageous girl with the audacity to do the things that nobody else would do. <laughs> But he had the right attitude for not trying to put down that spirit in me, yes. but to nurture it and give me the support. So he, he told everyone that, look, if this loan goes bad and she's unable to pay, yeah. he's prepared to sell his house mm. and pay off the loan to protect, and protect mm. the family. But he didn't have to because, you know, I knew enough to know that I must keep my word. Yeah. And therefore, I worked really hard. And because of the opportunity that that funding gave me, I competed for what was easily the biggest uh, office furniture job in Lagos at that point. And I was able to get it against all odds. And I worked really hard to make sure we executed it successfully. And when I got paid 15 months after I took the loan, I just went straight to the finance house to say, how much do I still owe? And even though the interest rates were crazy, I had just enough to pay them off. Didn't have money, but I had the factory and all the machinery I had bought, and I could use that to do new businesses. I had the referral of having executed such a huge job at a young age. Yeah. I was still on 30 when I took that job because I just had my first child. I got married on my 28th birthday. I had him before my 29th birthday. And it was within that period into waiting to be 30 that I executed that job. So I know what the, the mindset with which we're brought up. Yeah. And even if it's missing from the beginning, we're in the time and age where we can make a determination as to we, who we want to be. That's right. And find the right kind of support system and encouragement to help us be able to fulfill the vision that we have. That's right. it's, um, it's a world where you can redefine yourself, but you must make the decision. You must be intentional. You must be deliberate and you must do the work. Absolutely. Oh my like age is irrelevant, by the way. It has, cause, cause a lot of people always get hung up. You know, one of the thing that, things I've experienced in my life is, let, let's dial back. Like when I was 40, mm -hmm. it was like revealing a secret because everybody didn't really know how old I was until then. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of between the things that achieved at that point and my age, there was a disconnect. Yes, people thought you were- The death birthday landmark thing was sort of like the reveal and he exposed me. I was like, that's all, she's only 40? Yeah, age is irrelevant. Just do what you need to do and get on with it. That's right. That's, that's my attitude. Thank you. What a great story. I mean, and, and to your point, like we in Igbo, I don't know if it's an Igbo proverb, but we say whenever a man wakes up, that is their morning. So fortunate to be raised in such a way at an early age to be, you know, courageous and confident at such an early age. That's actually, I mean, I'm, I'm still pretty impressed, right? 
it's amazing to have such presence of mind or you came to yourself a little later in life either way following the the other things that you talked about i think is also really powerful because what i picked up on are a few th other things one the power of relationships so yeah. you talked about how you had a relationship with your client your customer but also with the finance house because even though it was a transactional uh, relationship initially your level of integrity and the way you showed up caused a level of trust to be there and i think that that's such a powerful message to people especially today when there's so much temptation to be anyhow in our dealings so that integrity i think was so powerful one that they trusted you but you know uh for me, I've always believed that the physical follows the spiritual and vice versa. Because you have been so particular about integrity, because you, fo you follow up on your word, right? Then, then you said, I'm going to do this. Everything had to follow up on the word too, again, because you have been living to your word. So now life has to follow to your word too. So I, I found that really intriguing as well. And then the other thing that I wanted to call out as I segue into the next question, when you said that the lady asked you, or I, I, I called her lady, your customer said, why do you yeah. feel? As a gentleman, actually. Okay. I, I, you know, part of how we bonded, how? he was a man who only had daughters. Oh. He had three daughters at that point in time. And he just thought it was fascinating to find this young girl mm. that was making something of her life. Mm. And he sort of saw that what his daughters could do. But he was also a very traditional man mm -hmm. who the male child was important to. And because he had daughters, I always challenged him to stand up and fight for his daughters because they can be anything that they want to be and they would still make him proud. So mm -hmm. he started calling me his daughter and that I was his best daughter <laughs> and that his uh, daughter's that I would help him look out for his daughters, you mm -hmm. know. And so we always talked about his daughters. I became like a child in their house, really, because his wife uh, took to me. I could go into their house and walk in and out of their bedroom, you know. So relationships are key. And it's not you manipulating relationships. Be honest and open and value-giving mm -hmm. relationships. See, some people are in relationships to take value. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot more... Uh, satisfying to give so much value to yeah. people without asking for anything. Yes, absolutely. Because when, when you really need value, you wouldn't have to ask for it. People mm -hmm. will give it to you. That, mm -hmm. That's been my experience. I generally try to give much more than I'll ever ask. Wow. It's my general approach. Yes. And, you know, and thank you for saying that, because I think, it, again, we again, we're living in a time when there is this idea that you have to be mercenary, you have to be cutthroat to be successful. And so when you meet women or men who are people of faith, people of integrity, kind, even just being kind, right? it's so important to remind people that you can be successful and be kind and be gracious. There's something that that when you shared the story about just before you go on, go sorry, one thing to add. When I talk about relationships, don't make the mistake. It's not just about relationship upwards. Yes. It's really key to understand that you can never right, rightly predict which relationship will serve you. That's right. So That's for right. me, it's about relationship in a 360 degree view. Mm. Up, down, to your left, to your right, old, young rich, poor, That's right. nothing, you know, That's... and just know that it is the smartest thing you can do to invest in people mm. across any board. People are very mobile. You never know where they'll show up. So mm. just be kind because the word you, when you said be kind, that's what triggered my memory to say that be kind to all men, mm. be gracious to all men. Do all the good you can whenever you have the capacity to do it for anyone with no expectations. Mm. You know which one of your seeds will bring the harvest. Yeah. That's what has taught me. In, in 59 years of my life, I will be 60 in December. I have done most things ahead of time. Mm. I have faster than uh, 
most would expect. And I've lived multiple lives in one life, and I know I'm not done by any mile. Yeah. What I've seen in that time and that period, that people are really the real asset in your life. Yes, absolutely. You have to pay attention. Yes. You know, so there is, um, and I have to testify, because when I had the opportunity to meet to you for the first time, I'll tell you, because I don't live in Nigeria. I come home. I grew up in Nigeria. I come home quite a bit. And there's so many things I love about us, right? Yeah. Um, but the average Nigerian knows who they are. And they know, yeah. you know, there's a way we carried ourselves, even to the point that they know us here. They're like, ah, we, there was a way we carry shoulder. But when I met you for the first time, I had always watched you, right, and thought she embodies feminine leadership for me. But then when I met you, it drove it home because you were so gracious. You were, you were kind, of course, and you were easy. You were wonderfully feminine, standing in power, but just very easy. And, and there was a sweetness about you that sometimes when, you read, when you're reading the bio and all the titles, it's, I was like, oh, see, this is feminine leadership right here. Trust me, I have no hang up about CVs. I actually hate them reading them when I go somewhere to speak or something because I find them a distraction. I consider CVs as history. Mm -hmm. Been there, done that, that's what you've done. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, what you've done can be a distraction to what you can yet do. Mm. So the thing is not to get hung up or no, I've done this, I've done that. So what? It's history. Mm. You know? So I'm more focused on what is it that I can still do. And you, you, sometimes you need to just take away the weight of the things you've done because it slows you down from doing even greater things. Oh, I love that. You know that. how I'm a Christian and you know the Bible says, uh, yeah, your tomorrow will be greater than your yesterday. Right. You know, the glory of the latter shall be greater than the former, which means that yesterday is nothing compared to your tomorrow. And I'm a firm believer in the word. Mm. So, which is why CVs are usually your yesterday. That's right. It frees you to think like you're just starting. Mm. And that makes you run. It also keeps you simple. Yeah. Life is simple. Life. You know, and, and I like being a girl. I like being a simple girl who is free to run. No... No hang-ups. I love that. And if you remember that night, we talked about femininity and leadership and power, and you shared some things with me. I think there are some women who, there's two, two messages I'm seeing now, right? There are those women who believe that femininity and power and leadership are mutually exclusive. So in order to lead in the world, you have to kind of be masculine. And then there are other that are believing now that to be feminine means to be passive and not to really, to be almost ornamental, just find a rich man to take care of you. What would you say, you know, to this? What would you say? Well, everyone has a right to make their own choice as to how they want to live their life. So I always say that the message I preach or the things I drive or I fight for are for the girls who are willing to walk that route the girls who are committed to maximizing their talents, mm -hmm. to um, the ambitious girl who wants to do great things, who isn't satisfied to be the ornament, uh, to just sit on the sideline. Now, the girl who wants to be kept has the right to make that choice. And if that's what she wants, then she has to live by it. And that's fine. And I don't uh, begrudge anyone for mm -hmm. whoever they want to be. But as many other women as are comfortable to lead and not just to be led, are comfortable to sit on top of the, at, at the top of the table and not just at the bottom of the table or serve the table. Mm. As many of us as are willing to call the shot where the opportunity uh, uh, shows up and where they have the capacity to and are willing to, then every such girl should have every opportunity, every right, every support to do that. And it's absolutely your right to do it. And to do it without changing your gender. I love being a girl. So I will never, in fact, what I realized as part of responsibility in my journey at this stage is, look, the opportunities I've had have placed me, has placed on me certain responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And I feel that 
for the sake of every woman that comes after me, I have a responsibility to make the journey easier. Mm -hmm. and, and I also have a responsibility to show that you can do it your way and do it right. I'm deliberately feminine. Mm -hmm. I'm deliberately colorful. I love colors. I love jewelry. I don't apologize about it. Mm -hmm. If I wear a trouser suit, it's because that's what I want to wear. But I wear it and I'll still be a girl. You know, I, I, I love being a girl every way, but I'm still smart as a girl. And that for me is the important message that I don't have to become anybody else but me, which is why one of my most popular mantras is to thyself, be true. Be true to you. Be true to your vision, to your ambition. Be satisfied to be different. Mm. Be satisfied and proud to be ambitious. Don't apologize for it. But of course, you live in a context and in a society and you must be smart enough to find out to work your context successfully. Mm -hmm. Which means your goal is to play to win. How do you play to win? Mm -hmm. What are the steps that you need to take? Where is your ultimate goal as you perceive it? Mm -hmm. What gaps do you see between where you are now and where you want to go? What plan do you then need to put in play in order to prepare yourself to take the opportunities as they show up for you? Mm -hmm. you know, so it, it's all of those things that the smart girl then needs to work on and also to realize that she can't do it by herself. She has to find the right support system. You know, at the International Women Leadership Conference in Dubai, the 2022 edition, we had a major session on uh, building a tribe. Because that for me was important because I wanted every girl to understand that, look, your friends you went to school with are great. Right. Your friends you've met at work are great. But to get to where you want to go, if you're that girl that wants to get to the top of your game, mm -hmm. you need to be deliberate and intentional about selecting the ones who are your support system. You need to know why this person is in your life or not. You need to know how to build a tribe that fits the life that you want to live. Mm -hmm. The value they bring to the table, the value you bring to their table, mm -hmm. and the commitment to one another with intentionality to uphold each other and to strengthen you when you're weak because those moments will come. That's right. To fight for you when you need an army to fight for you because there will always be moments of challenges. There isn't a life that is a flat ride. Mm -hmm. So when you get to those moments, you better have the right team and mm -hmm. the right support system to get up and stand for you. And so we need to be a lot more strategic mm -hmm. as girls. It's not an anyhow life, things just happen. No, you can't win over the long term in a sustainable manner if you're not a lot more deliberate, more intentional and strategic That's and true. taking the right decisions at every stage with the support of those that you have empowered to speak into your life. Mm -hmm. to because, you know, the total summation of your life is the product of all the decisions you've made at different times mm -hmm. because every decision has consequences and the consequences of them is what defines what your life is. Mm -hmm. So you need to have the cost when you take a decision. But know that when, and it doesn't mean you shouldn't make hard calls. Yes. It means when you make the hard call, you must be ready for the cost. Mm -hmm. Because if you know the cost, then you can plan how to mitigate it. So the cost is not the problem. Because sometimes you make a value-based hard call that you already know will cost you. Yes. But you must then prepare yourself for it. But you must have a long-term mindset. Because sometimes you pay a price, but the price in itself That's is right. long-term value added. That's right. It's worth it. You might have a long-term setback, but long-term you get. I love that. And, you know, so I just wanted to call out a few things that I'm picking up. Listen, I don't know about you guys. This is my personal session. So I'm just going to take my stuff. I hope you guys are getting what you're getting because it's so rich what Mrs. Awoshika is sharing with us today. But... So for me, hearing you, one, having this clear sense of what is my purpose on this earth? What am I here to do? 
what is possible for me and looking broadly at that and then thinking intentionally about everything you're doing in your life, right? from building your tribe, which thank you for saying that. I feel so, I still feel sad. You know, that Dubai, I was meant to be there. But this year. You'll be there in 2023, 2023 for sure. 2023, for sure. I'm there. I've already bought my, uh, and we have people, we're already buying our tickets. I hope you guys are not going to miss out on this Dubai conference in a second, because it's really powerful building your tribe, being in the right rooms, right? I call it your community of power, because we all, communities but you need a power community to help you move to the next level the um, there was something that you did in the very first story about your funding that I see you doing consistently that is a very feminine message right and it's in line with what you said about I'm deliberately feminine which by the way I'm going to start using and Mr. Washika please make a t-shirt because if you don't make the t-shirt I'm deliberately feminine in fact at, at the maybe uh, let me, let me talk to somebody. Maybe I can gift it because it's such a powerful phrase. I'm deliberately feminine. Because let me tell you one of my deliberate femininity moments. When I became the chair of First Bank, now in the boardroom at First Bank, we have this long wall where they've had um, from the chairman from 1894 that the bank started. And of course, they're all men, since I'm the first female. And I didn't become chair until 1st of January 2016. So they have all these pictures of all the men from the Europeans, uh, the British guys to the Nigerians, different Babariga suits and all of that. And then finally, one girl shows up in the boardroom. And on that wall, they then put a picture of me in a pale blue dress. I got them to pull it down immediately and said, <laughs> You're not going to have the girls walk into this room on this wall where you never had one and you're going to pick, put a picture of me that's as colorless as the ones of the men. Never. Uh -uh. I got them to put a picture with me in a hot fuchsia pink dress. Oh! So that it's clear the girls have come into the room. Ooh. I love it. A hot future, not just regular. You must be comfortable in your femininity because it doesn't undermine your power, your brilliance, or your ability to do great things. You, you, you should earn and occupy your power without changing who you are. Love the yellows or the greens or the fuchsia or whatever color you like you call it. Be you. Just be smart. Just be efficient, be diligent, deliver value. Let no one have any doubt as to the fact that you have the right to be in that room, you qualify for it, and that you must earn their respect and their trust because of the value that you deliver there. It's not, uh, those two things are not against each other. Being beautiful, brilliant, smart, colorful, every inch a woman, and being brilliant, high performing, able to deliver at any level, they're not mutually exclusive. They work hand in hand, and there's more than enough evidence around the world of women doing those things. So we should stop trying to become what anybody else defines us to be. We should be comfortable to be us That's right. and to do it with grace and with pride. I love it. I love it. I, listen, you just took us to church. Hold on. I have to just right now because uh -huh, now I feel <laughs> conversation because I'm so inspired by what you said and it's so powerful because when you hear people saying it, it doesn't hit the same way you hear a woman who has been extraordinarily successful saying it. She's deliberately feminine. We're all, Auntie Ruka, please get that t-shirt because I can clearly see all of us are ready to buy it today because okay. we, we we'll have them at the conference in Dubai. Yes, absolutely. So we'll put that there. Thank two things. you so much. To thyself be true, and I'm, I'm deliberately feminine. No apologies. That's no how. Apologies. Well, no apologies. And if you don't, I hope you caught the other part of what she was saying, though. That as you are deliberately feminine, something I always talk about is lead with mastery too. She, Miss Oshika, is a master. So there's no how that she's not invited anywhere because she's a master of her craft. She's excellent. She does what she does. So you must be. You must be. You must. Otherwise, be. 
we, we do a disservice to every other woman. I consider, because we're still in the minority in most spaces, mm -hmm. every girl in any space is an ambassador. Mm -hmm. And you must take your role as an ambassador seriously. You must understand the consequences of your success in that space to every other girl that is lined up behind you. Mm -hmm. But you must also recognize the cost of your failure in that space. Wow. To every woman that's coming behind you. Wow. That's what keeps me awake. Wow. Every space that I occupy. That sense of responsibility. Thank you for that. Very, very powerful. I think there's another question that I have, but I want to segue into the Dubai conference because... I think it's important that we talk about it. I saw someone saying, I'm saving my money to go. And I just want to honor that. I think that is such a powerful thing. When I was younger, I did not understand the value of being in the right spaces and in the right rooms. Because when I think about, I was very sad that I missed last, you know, missed this year. It was this year. It was this year. Yeah, it was, missed it was year. March this year. March this year, because I had been planning to attend. Um, but it was unavoidable. But when I watched everything and I was seeing, and I have friends who attended, I have friends who I told about it that flew from Atlanta to go. And she has been raving about it. She can't stop. Oh, we had fun. We had a lot of fun. It was amazing. And yeah, yeah. The mindset shifts that happen when you're in the right room, just hearing other people talk and, and, and receiving the energy. And then we're talking about building a tribe. If you have to save your coins, I wish I knew what I know now then. It would be so powerful for everyone listening, whether you're coming from Atlanta or you're coming from Nigeria or Ghana, wherever you're coming from. That's why I'm totally already on board. I've already had a whole conversation with a whole bunch of women. We're planning to go because, and Dubai is far, you're saying it's far for Nigeria. For me in Atlanta, it's far. But I've already planned. Why? Because I know the value of who's putting it on. I know the number the intentionality that has gone into the curriculum. I know the women that are going to be in the room. I, look, I'm not trying to sell it for you, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling myself I'm excited. So, I, you know, would you share with us a little bit about what you have planned? Why should women be thinking about coming? Okay, so for 2023, which and registration has already started, by the way. So we've released the first 150 tickets of only 600 tickets. And we're very strict about that. Mm. Once we close it, we close it. So the, the theme for 2023, and the dates are 29th, 30th, and 31st of March, 2023. It will be at the Intercontinental uh, Hotel Festival City in Dubai. We're using two hotels right next to each other, Intercontinental and Crown Plaza. And the theme for 2023 conference is Women in Leadership uh, against, all, against the odds, against, against all odds, okay? So now, last year was playing to win, Women in Leadership playing to win. This is against all odds. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the bottom line is there are many odds that women have to face, but the bottom line is it's possible to beat them. Right. Otherwise, there'll be no girls sitting in high places. And there are many girls sitting in high places mm -hmm. right now. They're not enough. There needs to be more. But we also need to build how they stay, they live intentionally, how we allow, uh, help them to stay sustainably. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in being sustainable in those positions to move from one to the other. Most women are technically competent, mm -hmm. but there is a lot of other knowledge that you require in leadership in a competitive world where the odds are against you in order to be able to survive in it. That's right. And that's part of what we're doing. So for each year is to curate those needed skills, those needed tools. In 2022 conference, we focused on the importance of building your tribe. It was a major part of last year's conference because for us it's key. Yes. We focused on understanding power. Because you see, if you don't understand how power plays, you don't know how to use it. Uh -huh. I said. So those were part of the things 
that we dealt with. And then we focused on the intentionality of women connecting mm -hmm. across borders. Okay, because women have powers, but they have it in silos. But when you connect the power of women, you can create a superpower that can support every woman to move forward. So that's, what we, that's what we did with 2022 conference. We're building on that forward mm -hmm. to say, okay, now how do you beat the odds? Okay, how, what are the other tools that you need to focus on that is critical so we're going to have a full focus on how women negotiate, mm -hmm. understanding how to negotiate from a position of power yes. or out of it, but negotiating to win. But also, how do you mediate? Because being a leader requires that you have the capacity to mediate between your team, between organizations, and with powers in and around you. And how do you mediate even in your personal life to win? Mm. Because you might not realize it, but you're, you have a lot of conflict resolution situations. You have a lot of mediation between in-laws, neighbors, husband, children, team members, bosses, down. It's a major tool of leadership. Right. And you must understand the principles, the fundamentals, and the techniques for applying it for your journey. Absolutely. Then how do women understand how to take advantage of opportunities even better than men? Right now, women play below par. Mm. We're taking opportunities concerned. Because otherwise, we won't be talking about uh, imposter syndromes and the likes. It's because half the time, women feel like they are underqualified for what they're already overqualified for. Mm -hmm. If you need to be qualified for a job before you take it, you're already overqualified. Because you must build into every opportunity you take mm. capacity so you can grow within it and you can stretch yourself and learn. Ooh. So you must have the courage to take what is bigger than you constantly. Ooh. And know that there's the room for you to learn within it mm -hmm. and to build power on it. Otherwise, you're going to be in a job for a year and you're already bored. Mm. So what is about how you think about it is how you see it is how you evaluate the situation and it affects how you approach it. That's right. So we have all of those different things. And then, you know, we're in a, in a world right now where there's new media, there's old media, but it's become weaponized mm. and women are disadvantaged in terms of how to use it. And it can easily be used against a woman more powerfully than against a man because there are many soft spots, soft spots where a woman is concerned. If you attack a woman's chastity, oh, she's a prostitute. A lot of women fall apart when they get yeah. come after in those. Yeah. Oh, she's this. Oh, the first thing, if a woman is successful, she must be sleeping with some powerful man. Mm -hmm. You know, when they say you have a godfather, you know, my common response to, to that is, oh, yes, I do. I have God the father. That's right. Jehovah he sits in every room, fights my many battles, <laughs> gives me multiple victories, on, and man. I have no fear uh, of that. And so it, it's really learning how do I deal with these situations? Yeah. How do I respond when the, uh, people try to use the system against me? What do I do? You yeah. must know how to react. You must know how to respond. You must understand it and not run away from it. Because mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. time. We, we allow, as women, we allow people to misuse the system to make us have to hide our head even when we're standing clean and we know that we are. So we must learn how to fight back. Oh, wow. And fight back strategically. Strategic. And I love how you talked about learning how to leverage the power we have as women. And I do believe that for us as women, because some of the things you talked about I consider them under, when I teach under those, I consider them the feminine intelligences, like mm -hmm. emotional intelligence, which is part of what you've just talked about now with mediation and learning how to, and even being resilient, you know, spiritual intelligence, intuitive intelligence, these are all tools that we have, but very often understand the value of them. And so I'm excited that 
the conference is going to have a focus on how we can overcome things. Somebody asked a question in here saying, how can you overcome the challenges uh, in a male dominated uh, industry? And I'm like, that's why you need to be in Dubai or you need to be in a 360 leadership life. So many I actually teach, I teach a session on um, being part of a male dominated environment. How do you succeed as a woman and compete in that? Because as of today, Mm -hmm. Most high level executive positions, the woman is in the minority. Of course. And you have to be comfortable in it. You have, otherwise, you allow yourself to just become one of the number and you disappear. That's yeah. not the idea. That's the right. idea is that you hold your voice, you hold your own, mm -hmm. and you find right. how to be comfortable in the midst of so many women without being compromised. Mm. Because if you you, if you open yourself up without understanding, it's easy for you to become a victim of what you don't plan. Hmm. And once you make that kind of mistake, it's too difficult to correct. Hmm. Hmm. So it's why I spend so much time trying to build the next generation of women. I, I, I just feel I don't have a choice. If you've had some of the unusual opportunities I've had to sneak into places that you know, many women might not have not been yet. I learned it not for me. I learned them for all. And mm -hmm. that's why. Because people always ask me, why do you share so much about your life? Because I have no use for it in heaven. My experiences are to bless other people. And I'm glad to, to share. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. I mean, this is so rich and so valuable. So I already, people have asked how they can register for the conference. So before we ask the last question, I just want to uh, make sure that, I don't know if someone can put it in the chat box for me. Um, it is yes. -E .com. W -W -T -I -W -L -C com. And someone com. Yeah. ULC.com. Yeah. ULC. Can someone put that in the chat box for us and I'll pin the comment up so that everyone can go figure out how to register. And I just want to point this out and, and, and buttress this, uh, what Ms. Awushka has said, why you should really make this investment. I love a couple of things. One that is in Dubai. Some people are saying, can it come to Nigeria? Listen, there are times when you have to learn to go to the thing. You have to be willing to move to the next level, right? So thank you. Let me pin this up before I go any further. Thank you, Wamaka. Uh, I'm going to pin it up. So you have to be willing to take a step out of your comfort zone. Go to the thing. Go to the thing. So the fact that it's Dubai is going to open you up. You, you know, part of what, what we've said is, look, mm -hmm. part of building your tribe is you don't come to the conference by yourself. You come with your tribe. Mm -hmm. You come with your girlfriends. It's the International Women's Month. That's why it's fixed in March. Mm -hmm. So it's time mm -hmm. away to look after you. Okay? Look after your mind. Look after your thinking. Pets, look after your relationships with your girlfriends. Have fun. Because there are three pillars to the conference for me. It's knowledge, it's power, and it's fun. Mm. We set up the conference to make sure it covers those three pillars. And if you ask all those that were at 2022 conference, they will tell you we had all three our pillars fully covered. Oh. Okay. So it's have oh, fun, have knowledge, create relationships. And we have so many testimonies from this year's conference. People that are already doing business together, connecting, meeting up in different cities around the world, catching up. A lot of things are happening. It just makes me happy because um, I know that the goal is being fulfilled. That's I, it. Sure. And I just want to, last thing I will say, two things. One, for my non-Nigerian friends, those people that are on my platform that are American, Caribbean, wherever you're from, I want to encourage you to come with me. Let's go together because I'll tell you, you want an international network. Gone are the days when you just network within the people that look like you and sound like you. This is an African, a conf an international women's conference. So you're going to meet women from all over. And so just imagine how you will, what, I can't remember how you put it earlier, Mrs. Woshka. You talked about how when we come together, it's like a superpower, right? Yeah, because we connect all our silos power to create a superpower. This year, we had women from about 15 African countries we had women from multiple cities in Europe, multiple cities in America. We had women from the Caribbeans. 
and we had women in diaspora from other cities, Dubai itself, other Middle East and Asian countries. So it was a, a melting pot. And I'm deliberate about picking a neutral ground. What we're trying to do is build a tribe, one tribe of African women, detribalized of our nationality. Mm -hmm. and we needed a neutral ground. So it's not, oh, we're, we're in Ghana, we're in Nigeria. So it's the Nigerian conference. No, no, no. It's the conference of the African women, no matter where they are, or women of African descent, no matter where they come from. We had Jamaicans from Barbados. From It was fun. It was really, it was great. And it was across multiple age generations. That for me was something that I truly loved. It was multi-generational. And the, the ease with which they communicated across the generations is key because we are learning from ourselves and we're not allowing the knowledge to be lost because we create a multi-generational platform. The oldest person at the conference was 78 and the youngest delegate was 19. Wow. I love that. I love that. A room where nobody sits too high or feels too low. That's yeah. the room you want to be in. So I've pinned it for those of you saying, oh, I have all these serious questions. Just go to the website, organize yourself, empower yourself. You don't get to be successful without taking some powerful steps. So this is your first powerful step. And I, I just want to say thank you for coming on to share this. There have been a couple questions um, about relationships. I feel almost like how do we pivot from this place to now start talking about relationships, but it has come up so many times. And, um, and I, I will say that one of the most almost iconic clips from you've talked, you've had so many wonderful speeches, but there's a clip I've seen shared over and over and over again. And it's a clip that I myself, you know, every time I see it, I share it again. I'm like, yeah, so this is the truth, right? And you talk about how important it is to make the right choice in marriage. And with that, so that's the question I want to ask. And there's been a number of questions like this that speak to that. So here's a question that kind of, that came up from Take, Teka Me The Brand. And so the question she says is, how can you, how do you succeed without your husband or partner being threatened by your success? So I'd like to couple that with choosing the right partner, which is something you've spoken about multiple times. You're, you've been married for a long time. You've been successful for a long time. So I feel as if you can shed a lot of wisdom for us here. Okay. Uh, in December, I would have been married for 32 years and I've been in business. For 34. Come on. So what that tells you is most of my business life and success has been as the wife of my husband. So what that has taught me is choosing the guy is the first critical assignment of your life. Yes. So if you're still single, please don't be caught up with just uh, wearing a fancy wedding dress in one day and just follow anyone. Mm. Okay. Do the work. Be honest with yourself about knowing that you need to pick a man who loves everything about you, including your ambition, mm -hmm. and who has the capacity to grow as you emerge. Because no matter who you are now, if you're an ambitious young woman, nobody knows just how the future can unfold. Mm -hmm. And you need a man who has the capacity to grow with it whilst he's walking his own journey as well and you can support one another to be the best of yourself your spouse is a key success factor mm. don't mess with it it's not an emotional decision a lot of people think oh i'm in love i'm in love yeah you will love the guy that you decide to marry but be sure you know exactly why you're marrying him and you're not marrying him just because he wants to marry you okay good for him that he wants to marry you be sure that you can also say i want to marry him and this is why and that's why works for the life that you want to live for the long term. So that is your first key success factor. You don't, you mess up on that. It just makes a lot of things so difficult and you need uh, to deal with that. So business, everything else, that is a truth that you must follow. Okay. Excellent. And, and we're just going to leave that there because 
like she can do a whole seminar right on it but that is really key one and if you follow the path that she's laid out right from the beginning of your story when you talked about kind of being a confident woman being a courageous woman feeling as if i can do anything i set my mind to thinking long term versus short term and then really doing you know it sounds like you've always been a woman of faith doing your inner work right i talk about doing this inner work knowing who you are getting validated by yourself because so many times we get into relationships because we want validation and we want acceptance and we want affirmation and you enter into the wrong thing and if the foundation be broken you know what can you do so if you're doing all of these things and you're focusing on what you can create as given so much then you now can make a good choice for those of you that are asking well what if you already made the choice okay life so you need to work out how, look, if you've made the choice and it's not working out as you thought, don't compare your situation with any other woman's. Look at your own particular situation and understand the context of where you are. Mm -hmm. And within your own context, work out your salvation. Determine exactly how you play to win in that scenario without losing sight of what your end goal is mm -hmm. and whatever works for you to achieve that that's what you do don't care what anybody else is doing because the the problem for women as well is oh you listen to your friends you listen to your neighbors to your aunties how can you listen to your how can your husband say that how can this mm -mm. once you make the choice that this is the man i married and this is where i want to go no mm -hmm. Now, the point is, where I'm sitting, how do I make this work for me? That's what right. are the things I need to adjust in other, what are sometimes the sacrifices or sometimes the decisions that you need to make? Because it's about opportunity cost. What do I consider more important in my life that I want to sacrifice for? And how far am I willing to go in terms of the sacrifice? for the things that I want to achieve. When you answer those questions, you then decide. Now, it's, it's the kind of situation where I can only speak to you in a coaching session in depth because I must have the full details and all of that. Or like in a 360 executive class, I see some people asking me about that. I think you're gonna to have to contact, um, I think there should be information on the website okay. where you, you would know who to contact for the 360 executive and all of that, but I have, I'm running a class tomorrow, actually, it's a nine hour session that I spend a whole day, but usually a small class, never allow more than 15. And when I'm doing it internationally, I can go up to 30, but it's a small intimate class, nine hour session. And then we can deal with specifics to drive down some of how you need to deal with your specific situation. Yes. Okay. But it doesn't mean that just because yeah, the beginning isn't working as it is. There are ways you can walk through it and still achieve what you want. Absolutely. Thank you for that. So you guys, you know what to do. Follow for more. Connect with Mrs. Awushika. She has so many resources available for you. For those of you asking questions, divorce, married, all of those are questions that you can go back. And like she said, you need. she needs to know the specifics. But what I've taken away is you have to work out your own salvation. You alone know the context and you have to know where you're going, what you're dealing with, and then make a choice accordingly. I remember what she said earlier, for everything, there's a consequence. For everything, there's a cost. Sometimes the cost may be high in the moment, but long-term, it's going to you know, pay off. So you have to kind of think critically about that. And uh, you know, I, I think I would venture to say as well, in all things, though, we are spirit-led women. And I think... Uh, I would agree with that. I know that your time is very precious. You've given us a lot of it. And so I want to honor your time. I don't want to keep you longer than uh, we've already, already uh, been here for. I want to say thank you so much for sharing. So thank you for being yourself and, and bringing your heart. Look, you see, you inspired me. Someone said, how did I find the props? I just happened to have it. <laughs> Who knew? Thank you for being here. Thank you for everything. We're looking forward to being in Dubai. I can't wait to rock. Looking forward to having you. So, it will be fun. I'll we'll have, you know, the gala is the closing event at the conference. And last, 
this conference, 2020 conference, the gala was hot. I saw. The next year, oh, we will even be more fun. I saw the photos, Mrs. Owoshika. Let me tell you, I'm already planning how I'm going to be deliberately feminine. I have to go you and find the. Be. You can't just come anyhow. You have no, to. No, no, there's no anyhow at uh, TRWLC gala night. A top A game. I saw the drummers. It was amazing. I we just... had the girl bands that were competing for the crown. And then we had the queen of the night. And we had the most glamorous. It was fun. It was all around fun. And the people were dressed to kill. I love it. We now... wanted to buy to know what the African woman is like. I, well, they certainly did. And I'll tell they you. Did. I do events for part of my living. When I saw that event, I sat down, I said, I need to take notes. This <laughs> and I'm so blown away. Of course, I expected nothing less. And so I know this year, th next year, it's going to be phenomenal. So go to the website, register. I've already, <laughs> you people don't even know. I'm going to be there. Ms. Awashika, God bless you. Love you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, ladies. Thanks, Kenneth. Thank you so much. Bye, all of you. See you. Bye. Bye. Wonderful. Good night, everyone. Night, everyone. Bye.